Hey guys, I'm Morgan from FinePoints.biz and today I'm going to tell you 10 ways that you can help your bookkeeping business grow. You know, so you're going to have the seeds when you start your business and plant them in the ground. You're going to water them with your own experience and education. They need sunlight, of course, which is maybe, you know, referrals from other bookkeepers or accountants. And then eventually you might grow some veggies. You might get those little peas. And of course, that's going to be the satisfaction of helping your comp customers, your clients. And of course, you're going to be able to have freedom in your business and your own financial gain. You can meet your financial goals with this business. So that's what we're working on today, growing. I'm going to film most of this inside because it's way too loud out here. All right, the first thing in my list to grow your business is to get the right tools. So in this case, I'm mostly referring to your online tools that you're going to use. So of course, you're going to want to use QuickBooks Online. That is what I recommend. Um, and then you can also layer that with other programs that go along with that. So Bill.com is one I'm trying out now, and I'll let you guys know how I like it. Asana is a workflow tool I use. A-S-A-N-A, -A -A, Asana. So I record all my videos there. I think I have a video that I think already posted about how I plan my how I plan my YouTube strategy. So I do all that in Asana. LastPass is a password protection um, program that I really like and I recommend. And then you might want a payroll company like Gusto or Paychex. So all of these online tools are really going to help you be more efficient and grow your business. Even if you have to make an initial investment or pay a monthly fee for them, many times in the long run, it's going to pay off for you. All right, number two, you're going to want to educate yourself. You know this is true. Um, there's a lot of different options out there, and I have a couple of videos, again, I'll link down below, about sorting through all the different options for bookkeeper certifications and bookkeeper education, but you know you're going to want to continually uh, learn about the industry and learn more things. So right now I'm taking Bookkeeper Launch, which I am really enjoying, so I'll leave a link for that down below. Last year I took a payroll class because I wanted to learn more specifically just about payroll. I just looked on my local community college and I took an online class for that. Of course, you want to get your QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor training. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out my channel called Free Bookkeeper Certification. And then, of course, shameless plug, I have a class you guys can join the waitlist for right now too. I open it up a couple times a year and it helps you start your business in 30 days. So regardless, in growing your business, you always want to have a mentality of continually learning. You don't just go to school once, figure it all out, and then you're done. It's a process. All right, number three is align yourself with accountants and other professionals, uh, probably financial professionals. So accountants are going to be some of your best referrals because they're, they have the contacts and they maybe during tax time, they don't have time to do all their bookkeeping clients. So they can offload some of those to you, or maybe you guys have different specialties and um, you can ref cross refer to each other. So definitely as much as you can go to networking events for accountants, for other bookkeepers, just get to know those people as much as you possibly can. That's going to help your business grow a lot. Number four, get to know your customers, because of course, customers, your clients are the most important thing. You want to really understand them, understand their needs and have a really good rapport with them. So I read Donald Miller's book, um, Building a Story Brand. I have a video on that called Get More Clients, I believe the video is called. Um, and he talks about making the customer, your client, the hero of the story. So all of your website content should talk about your client's problems. They want to run their small business and they don't want to do their bookkeeping. So you're going to come in and um, help guide them through that process. But they are the hero. They're the one with the problem and they need the solution and you need to be speaking to them. Number five, find a niche. So I've talked about this a lot. You've probably heard about this a lot, but the more you can specialize in one industry, the more you're going to be well regarded and valued in that industry. It's going to be easier to find those specific clients because you're going to know what you're looking for and they can do cross referrals. And then also you're going to know that industry so well that you can be super efficient and um, provide a ton of value to those clients. So get a niche if you haven't already. And just a note about starting out. If you're just starting out, you don't have to specialize so quickly. Maybe try a couple of different things. Think about what contacts you have in your life currently. Um, if you know a bunch of Etsy sellers, maybe you want to be a bookkeeper for Etsy sellers. But as quickly as you can, try to 
specify your exact client that you want to work with. Let me know in the comments if you have a bookkeeping niche that you are enjoying. What is your niche right now? Number six, find a network. So this has a couple of purposes. One, you can ask questions and so you won't come up, you won't feel alone when you come up against those roadblocks. And then um, as I talked before, you guys can do uh, client referrals. So maybe you can grow that way. And just again, the more you're plugged into these bookkeeper circles, these accountant circles, you can share ideas and it's just like a really collaborative place. So I have talked a lot about Facebook groups that are helpful. Bookkeeper Lunch has their own Facebook group or you can just form a network within your own community. I have a video about that as well, of course. Number seven is charge your worth. So this video is called growing your business and I know you want, you may want to get more clients to grow your business, but really what you want to do is you want to increase your income. You want to increase your revenue. And one important way to do that is to charge what you're worth. Don't undercharge. Don't charge, you know, 15, $20 an hour as a contract bookkeeper. Not only is that not good for you because you have all the ex expenses as a business owner that you need to account for, but then it also kind of lowers the industry standard all around. Because if we all as bookkeepers know how much we're worth and we know the value that we're providing to our clients and we charge accordingly, then that is gonna help the entire industry. So we go into this in detail in a video called Charge More, but basically you want to be able to provide that value to your client and communicate that to them. Number eight to grow your business is hire someone. So this might be a virtual assistant that you pay to do some email marketing or some tasks that you don't wanna do that you wanna take off your plate because you can charge a higher, if you're spending your time doing those tasks, you can charge you know, $60 an hour as a bookkeeper to do those and you can pay a virtual assistant a lower rate. So you are growing your business by outsourcing some of those things as well as you can even hi hire other bookkeepers to come and work in your business. So maybe there's someone who's just starting out who kind of wants to be an apprentice and wants to work for you at an hourly rate as you kind of mentor them. And then you are charging your client a higher hourly rate that you know includes you overseeing these bookkeepers starting out. So then it's a win-win for everyone because the new bookkeeper is learning even if they're getting paid less than they would on their own, but maybe they don't wanna start their business or they don't wanna have to deal with all that stuff. And you are still getting a cut of the money and the client is still getting quality work as you're reviewing it. I don't know if that sounds confusing. Someone asked me the question one time, how would you be making money if another bookkeeper is working for you? But there are definitely people out there that just wanna get experience starting out. I know because they email me every week and they're asking me if they can work for my business. And yes, it does take effort to, you know, hire your first employee to train them to do all these things. But in the long run, if you want to grow your business, you need to think about what tasks you want to be doing in your business. You need to be doing the highest level running your business and maybe let someone else do some of the menial tasks that aren't as important. All right, the ninth way to grow your business is focus and be productive. This sounds so simple, but it's way harder sometimes than you think it's gonna be. This is something that I really found working for myself, working from home, and I really had to get in good habits of being productive. So there are zillions of YouTube videos and different resources out there for being productive. I have one about a block schedule like Jordan Page does. Um, I really like the YouTuber Michelle B. She's um, in New Zealand, I think, but she has a lot of productivity tips. And then um, you guys may have heard of like the Pomodoro, I think it's called timer, where you set a timer for 25 minute chunks and then you do, you know, I think you do three of those chunks or a certain number of those chunks and then you take a break for a certain amount of time. So whatever works for you, but just make sure that you're not doing what I used to do. I would feel like I'd spend like all day Saturday when my husband was home watching the kids. I would spend all day Saturday like working, but really I'd be like, you know, I'd start late in the day, let's start at 10 and then, you know, take a lunch break and do a few things. Maybe you do some chores along the way. So as much as you can try to focus on this work time and then have fun when it's family time. All right. And number 10 is raise your standards of clients. Don't take on those clients that you know are going to be a pain. Usually you can just kind of sense it right from the beginning that it's not a good fit or maybe um, they do they need you to do some tasks that you don't want to do or you're not able to do 
or maybe they don't want to use QuickBooks Online and that is what you specialize in. So as much as you can, be patient and picky to get those right clients. And that in the long run is going to help you run your business and help it grow faster because you're not going to be wasting your time on those problem clients and dealing with them because you know a lot of your time is going to be spent on the problem clients versus the really good clients that you want to serve in your business. My goal is to help you get organized. I would love it if you stuck around and subscribed to my channel. And then a thumbs up is always a huge compliment that you can give me.